Okay, square root functions, 10-1. Uh, we're going to start out with the the very basic square root function, which would be y equals square root of x. And we can make um, we can make a table of this function. I'm going to go ahead and get to to a graphing section because we are going to be graphing. You will need some graph paper tomorrow. Um, let me get to a new page. Let me go back to that. Nope, not that. Back to that page. Not do that. New page. Do that. Sorry, as I talk to myself. Okay, so let's look at y equals square root of x. Now, we know at this point that we cannot take take square root values of negatives. So if I make a little table here, oh, let's say, let's make it about that big. And let me clean this up a little bit. Okay, and um, let's just take some values. Get back on my pen here. When we were graphing before, we would we would choose negative one, zero, one, and two. In this case, we're not going to want to choose negative one because we can't take the square root of negative one, and so. Um, we might take values that I can get perfect square roots on. Uh, for example, if I substitute in the value 0 and I take the square root of 0, well, that's going to give me 0 as my y value. And then if I put in 1, the square root of 1 is 1. Now, I may not want to go to 2 because that's going to give me some decimals. The next perfect square root would be 4. And so pardon me, and so the square root of 4 would be 2, and this is going to continue, uh, the next square root would be 9, and 3, and 16, and 4. And so I can start graphing, I'm just going to graph a couple of these because they all won't fit on here, but I would start at 0, 0, and then I go to 1, 1, and then I go to 2, 4, let's see, 2, 4, 4, okay, 0, 1, <clears throat> excuse me, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, I'm sorry, I'm, I've got those mixed up, I, I knew I looked at this and this looked wrong for a, for a second, I should have put the x's before the y's, um, so that's actually 4, 2, it goes this way, and then the next one's going to be 9, 3. So we can kind of see what it's doing here. It's going this direction, and it's going to take off and, and keep going that way. And this is the square root of x. Now we're going to look at a couple of things. Um, let's, let's say that we put something out on the outside. Maybe we have y equals 2 times the square root of x. So let's see what happens in that case. So I'm just going to do a, a simple xy table here real quick, just to save a little bit of time. Let's say that I plug 0 in for x again. And so the square root of 0 is 0. 2 times 0 is still 0. Let's go with 1 again, because I know that's going to work. And the square root of 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Let's go ahead and go with 2. And so I'm going to get my calculator out here. And I'm going to take um, the square root of 2, which is approximately 1.4. I'm going to multiply that. That's going to give me approximately 2.8. And I'm going to go ahead and use 3. And so I'm going to take the square root of 3 which is approximately 1.6. I'm going to multiply that by 2, and that's about 3.3. .3. So let's put these up there and see what it does. We, we call the square root of x our parent graph. Okay, so let me go back to it. Nope. There we go. This is our parent graph. It's where we start, and then we compare everything else to it. P-A-R-E-N-T, 
parent graph. There we go. And so let's see what this looks like compared to our parent graph. This is 0, 0. Again, I've got them in order this time. It is 1, 2. It is 2, 2.8. Going to have a little human error here. And then 3, 3.3. Okay. All right. So basically what that did versus our other one, you know, let's compare it to our parent graph. <coughs> Excuse me. At 0, 0, it's the same. Notice at 1, 1, when we get to our other graph, it was 1, 2. So we've almost doubled it. Basically what we're doing is doubling um, our parent graph vertically. So this is um, multiplied... I E D multiplied by two vertically. Okay, so anything that's on the outside of that square root of x is going to cause it to move vertical up and down. If it was a negative two, it would be multiplied by negative two vertically, so it actually shift downward. Um, so let's look at something that uh, that might be underneath the square root bracket. Okay, before we do one of those, we'll do uh, we'll do something that's plus on the outside of the bracket, and then we'll do something on the inside on the next one. So let's do the same thing. We're just going to take an xy table. Again, we're taking square root of x, so I'm just going to do what we did in the last one, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Square root of 0 is 0. Um, 0 plus 1 is 1. So that's going to be a different starting point for us on that one. It won't start right on the origin. And square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, now square root of 2, which we did on the last one, is 1.4. 1 1.4 plus 1 is 2.4. And then square root of 3 is going to be 1. Point uh, square root of 3 is going to be 1.7. Is that what I had on the last one? 1.7. I think I may have made a mistake on the last one. Um, but it's it's pretty close. And for graphing, uh, that'll work for now. Square root of 3 is 1.7. And I'm going to add 1 to that. And that's going to make that 2.7. Okay, so now let's graph this. We've got 0, 1. We've got 1, 2. We've got 2, 2.4. That's right in there. And 3, 2.7. Okay. So what this one has done is it has rows 1. Um, it has increased 1. On the last one, we know it was multiplied by 2. In this one, it's increased vertically. by 1. Okay, Increased vertically by 1. And that's because the 1 is on the outside of the square root bracket. All right, let's take a look, a look at one more. And that's going to be y equals, or f of x equals, again, that's a y value, um, square root of x minus 2. Okay, so now we have to be careful in our table because I can't put that 0 in there anymore. All right, if I put 0 in there, I'm going to have 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. And that's going to give me a square root that I cannot graph at this time. And so I'm going to start with what would make this 0. So what value can I put in for x that would make that 0? And obviously that will be 2. And so we take 2 minus 2, which is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. 
Now we know that any of the numbers up above this are going to work, so I'm going to use I'm going to use these values. Okay, so three minus two is going to be one, so that's the square root of one. Four minus two is going to be two, so the square root of two is 1.4, and five minus two is three, and we know that the square root of three is 1.7. So let's see what this does to my parent graph. We've got 2, 0, 3, 1, 4, 1 1.4, and 5, 1 1.7. So you'll notice this one, okay, this one increases horizontally. increases by 2. Okay, increases horizontally by 2. And so, just on this last one, let's go ahead and look at the domain and the range. Okay, we know that domain is our x values, so looking at our x values, we started at 2, because anything less than 2 is going to give us a negative value, which will not work. And so our domain, let me scroll this down just a little bit, our domain is our x had to be greater than or equal to 2. And then our range is our y values. And so we go back we go back up here and we look at our y values with our least domain, our least y value is zero. And so our domain is greater than or equal to two. And our range is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, we'll work on these a little bit more in class tomorrow. Um, so that is graphing square root functions.